podcast, coast to coast, and border to border on TuneIn, iTunes, and Radio Loyalty. We have a fantastic guest with us today. Joining us uh, here on iHeartRadio, Robert Spencer. And uh, Robert has been on our broadcast many a time in the past. He has written a recent article and uh, has been uh, also out there talking about his books. Um, Dr. Spencer joins us today here on Skype Audio. Now, Dr., your book is absolutely amazing. Tell us a little bit about the book. Thanks. The History of Jihad is the first and only one-volume history of the entire 1,400 years of jihad warfare. It's the only uh, such book in the English language, and it traces the whole thing from the beginning, from Muhammad, all the way up to today with al-Qaeda and ISIS and uh, all the rest of it. You have a uh, concise but comprehensive overview that I think if policymakers were to read, it would change a lot of our foreign and domestic policies. We've got Robert Spencer joining us today here on <laughs> Skype Audio to uh, discuss his uh, latest book. Now, um, this book has a lot of great details in it. Tell us about the research process and the writing process for this great book. What I try to do in the history of jihad is rely as much as possible on Islamic sources. And there are quite a lot of them going all the way back. The funny thing about it is is that there's a certain kind of moral inversion in that, in that the uh, sources I was using think that what was going on was just wonderful, particularly with the Muslim historians of the time who uh, dealt with the jihad against India. The various Muslim rulers of India, they usually had court historians who would write down what was happening as it happened, and I used those records. They, they're, they're kind of hair-raising in a certain degree. They say, you know, the, the emperor went out and he killed 10,000 Hindus and demolished their temples and so on, and this is something that they think is wonderful, but uh, we see it, of course, as part of an, a bloody record that is ongoing and continues today with 9-11 and with the threat that we still face. We've got the great Robert Spencer with us today. He joins us live, uh, and uh, this book, uh, absolutely, absolutely amazing, A History of Jihad from Muhammad to ISIS by Robert Spencer. It is available on Amazon. It is a uh, fascinating read. Pick it up today. Also, check out jihadwatch.org. And um, what's been some different feedback you've gotten on the book so far, whether it's uh, positive or negative? Well, it's a funny thing. Uh, actually, I was just looking at the Amazon reviews a few days ago, and I see quite a lot of five-star reviews, which, of course, are nice to see, and they have the notation, verified purchase, which is uh, uh, obviously the uh, indication that you really have read the book, the person who's reviewing it. And then I noticed that there are a few one-star reviews, and they're the only ones that don't have the <laughs> verified purchase notation. I think there's some people who, you know, they just don't want to face the facts on these issues. We've got uh, Robert Spencer with us today. I, I I love the fact that Amazon has that has that in there now with the uh, uh, reviews and 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 they say that uh, you've you've bought the book or you haven't bought the book. So uh, so you can kind of uh, I guess filter through some of the shenanigans out there. Yes, and so it's a, it's it makes a big difference when you see somebody saying, "Oh, this is terrible, hate filled nonsense without any basis in fact." And then you see, well, he hasn't actually read the book because, uh, of course, there are thousands of footnotes in the book. I was very careful to document all my sources. People can check on what is in there. Uh, but the main thing is that history is not just for what happened yesterday. History is so we can understand what's going on today and deal with it appropriately. And uh, this is, I think, one of the problems that we face in the world today, that uh, a lot of our policies are based on false assumptions and wishful thinking that don't have any basis in reality, and if we knew the history, we would just them. We've got Dr. Robert Spencer joining us today here via Skype audio. He is the director of Jihad Watch, author of the brand new book, The History of Jihad from Muhammad to ISIS. Now, the comprehensive history of the role of war and terror in, in the spread of Islam. Uh, break that down for us and how you talk about that in the book. It's a chronological treatment. It's uh, I just tell the story from beginning to end, and so uh, each chapter covers a century or two of jihad activity, 
and I take it through uh, from Spain to North Africa to the Middle East to India. Uh, and of course, in the later chapters, it comes to America, and I deal with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict with Saudi Arabia, the rise of al-Qaeda and ISIS, and so on. But uh, these things, people who think that al-Qaeda and ISIS and groups like them are something new in the world because they didn't hear about that kind of thing when they were kids, uh, don't realize that historically, if you look back, there are thousands of antecedents to these kinds of groups. There were always uh, jihad terror groups in the Islamic world, and uh, it, it, we're just seeing the latest incarnation of them. We've got Robert Spencer with us today. He joins us live here on our big program, and uh, we appreciate Robert taking the time out of his busy schedule to be with us today. Now, um, Robert, one thing that you talk about in your book, uh, The History of Jihad from Muhammad to ISIS, you talk a little bit about uh, the the role of war, but you also talk about how it's taken for granted, even among some of these Washington policymakers, that Islam is a fundamentally peaceful religion and that Islamic Jihad terrorism is something relatively new, a product of economic and political ferment of the 20th century. Break that down for us a little bit more, my friend. Absolutely. You know, if you went back, if we were to take a time machine and go to 1918, uh, nobody was talking about jihad. The uh, Ottoman Empire, the last caliphate, collapsed, and uh, a secular government was being placed in Turkey. There was no indication that uh, this was something that we were going to have to deal with in the 20th century. A lot of people thought it was a dead thing in those days, and uh, even nowadays people think that it's just some aberration that has uh, come on the scene because of various social or economic factors, and that we can uh, give these people some money or build some schools or hospitals and so on, and then this problem will go away. Uh, but they show a lack of awareness of history, that uh, there's everywhere Muslims have gone for 1,400 years, without any exception. They, there have been some Muslims among them who have uh, committed acts of violence against unbelievers and tried to extend the rule of Islamic law over those unbelievers. There are no exceptions to that. And so this is, uh, no, it really should come as no surprise to anyone that these things are happening today. After all, uh, the doctrines of Islam that call for violence against unbelievers have not been reformed or rejected or reconsidered. And so we shouldn't be surprised if some Muslims are acting on them today, and they are. We've got Robert Spencer with us today. He joins us live talking about his latest best-selling book. Uh, it is an amazing book, The History of Jihad from Muhammad to ISIS. You provide a lot of great details in this book. Uh, you trace the 1,400-year uh, war of Islamic jihadists against the rest of the world. Uh, you detail the jihad across Europe, including the 700-year struggle to conquer uh, Constantinople. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and uh, some of the different research and different things you put into this book. Okay, you got to. Uh, this is something that is uh, very important for nowadays because uh, Constantinople, the city that's now called Istanbul, the, ca the, uh, the biggest city in Turkey, not the capital, but the biggest city, uh, it was for 700 years Muslims waged jihad and tried to conquer it because uh, as Constantinople in those days, it was the biggest city in the Christian world and the center of the Christian uh, culture and the church. So the uh, Muslims believed that it was very important to show the victory of Islam over Christianity by conquering Constantinople, which they did in the year 1453. Now, this was in fulfillment of a, or what they thought was fulfillment, of a prophecy attributed to Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, who said that first the Muslims would conquer Constantinople, and then Rome. Now, of course, Rome they have not conquered, but they're still trying. And a lot of the Islamic jihadis of today think that now is their chance, with the uh, Muslims pouring into Europe in record numbers, they have a chance to conquer, Constantinople, um, con conquer Rome and fulfill the second part of the prophecy. Of course, if they do conquer Rome, they will consider, because that's the home of the Pope, that they have conquered the uh, center of Christianity today. And that will once again show, as far as they're concerned, the superiority of Islam over Christianity, and then the jihad will rage more fiercely than ever. We have got Robert Spencer joining us today here on our big program. And uh, Robert has a fantastic book out there, The History of Jihad, from Muhammad to ISIS. Now, uh, you also talk in this book about uh, 
the the whole truth about uh, Islam's bloody history in an age when Islamic jihadists are more assertive in Western countries than they've been for centuries. Uh, give me your take on that. The Saudi struck oil. That's what happened uh, when uh, people were forgetting about all this, and it was in retreat everywhere. Uh, in the 1938, it was that Saudi Arabia struck oil, and they began to spread their version of Islam, which is very violent and virulent, all around the world, uh, using the millions and billions that they had from oil money. And so there was a resurgence of jihad violence around the world as a result, uh, with uh, all this Saudi-financed propaganda being spread everywhere. And so the Saudis really, uh, to a tremendous degree, are responsible for much of the strife in the world today. We've got Robert Spencer joining us today here in our broadcast. Now, you also talk in this book about Muslim and non-Muslim uh, jihad. Uh, talk to us about that. Well, jihad means struggle, and it is the primarily in Islamic theology, it's the struggle of the believers against the unbelievers in order to establish the rule of Islamic law over the world. Uh, there was There were 450 years of jihad wars against ver uh, the Middle East, North Africa, uh, various uh, areas that nowadays are considered to be the heart of the Islamic world, but in those days were Christian, and uh, they were uh, conquered and Islamized, and now, of course, they are Islamic. But uh, there was never any response from the Christian world until 450 years had passed, and then the Crusades took place. A lot of people think the Crusades were the beginning of the uh, uh, the beginning of the hostility between the the West and the Islamic world, but actually it was just the uh, it was just that the uh, four hundred and fifty years of jihad violence before that had been ignored and have been forgotten today. Absolutely amazing. It is uh, Robert Spencer with us today. Robert, before we let you go, uh, how do people find you on social media, websites, all these things? Well, I'm at uh, jihadwatch.org on the web and jihadwatchrs on Twitter. There's a Jihad Watch Facebook page if you can find it with all the shadow banning. And uh, in any case, these things are updated daily with uh, news and commentary on jihad activity in the U.S. and around the world. Well, thank you, my friend. It's an honor and a privilege once again to talk to you. Have yourself a happy holiday, and uh, we'll talk to you uh, in the new year. Well, fantastic. I look forward to it. Appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. There goes Robert Thanks. Spencer uh, via Skype audio, and we are going to have more.